Hello, Wild 10 and Youth Coalition supporters from around the world. My name is Simon Jackson. I'm the founder of the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition. For almost two decades, you've helped us give a voice to an animal that few knew existed and empowered us to put forward a vision to protect the rare white Kermode or spirit bear. Today, we can say with confidence that while the spirit bear is not saved, it is safe. Our belief that this remarkable bear will endure is grounded in the success you've worked hard with us to create and the realization that this campaign is now far bigger than one person or one organization. The campaign to save the spirit bear is a full-fledged movement owned not by the Youth Coalition, but by each of you and millions from around the world. And having done all we can to take this issue this far, it is now up to all of us, as individuals, to take on the responsibility of continuing to make sure that the spirit bear isn't just safe, but will forever be wild and free. For this reason, today, as the world gathers in Salamanca, Spain, for the 10th World Wilderness Congress, we're announcing with pride that we've served our mission and lived up to our promise of putting ourselves out of business. We're announcing the end of the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition and the start of something much bigger. Our work helped forge what was the largest land protection measure in North American history, British Columbia's first meaningful de facto wildlife sanctuary, and overwhelming support for alternative routes to an oil pipeline that would have threatened the spirit bear with potential oil spills. And yet these accomplishments are imperfect. While we strongly believe that oil tanker traffic will now never pass through the spirit bear waters, there will be years of debate ahead surrounding Northern Gateway and how Canada as a nation strikes a balance between our need for oil and our obligation to protect the environment. Though select sanctuaries have been established through hunting license buyouts and promises from government not to enforce kill quotas, there is still the need to create a legal framework that enshrines areas for hunters and areas for animals, preventing an impending and unnecessary culture war in BC. And even with large swaths of land protected from logging and new measures in place to reduce the volume of trees cut, and roads built into the unprotected third of the spirit bear's last intact habitat, there remains lingering concerns. Without saving this watershed outright, we will be leaving no margin for error in our efforts to sustain the gene pool of this subspecies. Yet our organization's campaign began with the idealistic dream of a kid who loved bears and believed this bear deserved a voice. The movement grew with the singular but powerful idea that one person could make a difference. And after almost 20 years, we've accomplished 90% of what we set out to accomplish for the spirit bear. The unconquered 10% of our original goal remains critical. But in a time when there is far too much inefficiency and redundancy in the nonprofit sector as a whole, and far too few resources to go around, we had to ask ourselves, is going forward as an organization the best decision? And what is the best decision for the spirit bear? We could spend another 20 years fighting for that final 10%. But the reality is that an advocacy group is no longer best positioned to bring about change that is needed on this issue. For starters, to save the final watershed, it comes down to economics and First Nation land claims. It's complex politics, and the best path forward remains the proposed Hollywood animated movie, the proposed and long-stalled production due to lack of political leadership and unreasonable demands from some constituencies who want to have their cake and eat it too. Ultimately, breaking this logjam will require a clean slate and fresh faces, not the spotlight and pressure that an organization brings to negotiations. Additionally, to create a legal sanctuary from trophy hunting, quiet diplomacy will be a must to bridge the divide between disparate parties. Increasingly, in our social media age, it's impossible to be both an honorable diplomat and an open institution. Most importantly, though, the signature of a successful movement is when a cause outgrows its founding organization. For the second time, the Youth Coalition has helped make the spirit bear one of the top policy issues in Canada. 
this time thanks to the pipeline debate. With more groups and people engaged in this issue than ever before, this movement no longer needs us to lead, but rather it needs the Youth Coalition and other advocates to move aside and allow individuals to step forward with new, bold ideas that can capture and produce new solutions. But possibly this is the most important point of all. The Youth Coalition, our team, and me in particular, have been at this for a very long time. Throughout this journey, we've been nothing more than volunteers. And though we've made more than our fair share of mistakes, we've always tried to act with integrity to do right by the bear. And in attempting to lead by example, we've worked hard to push a new brand of environmentalism to the forefront. One that unites rather than divides, one built on pragmatic idealism, not idealistic pessimism. We were young and naive when we started, but as the years have passed by, we've become all too aware that there is always the danger of staying too long at the fair. New voices and new ideas, like the Youth Coalition at one time, must come forward and challenge the blinders that inevitably grow with time. And we as humans must ensure we don't slip into the embrace of ugly politics and its natural companion, bitterness. After all, negativity breeds failure. And there is always the risk of doing more harm than good to a cause, no matter how passionate one is about it. For these reasons, we know it is time to say goodbye. And in ending our campaign, we hope that it can be a teachable moment to demonstrate to all of the advocates that our goal must always be to put ourselves out of business. In saying goodbye, though, most critically, we must also say thank you. After all, for all that we have accomplished for the Spirit Bear, our greatest success wasn't protected areas or awareness generated. It was our ability to show more than six million young people that they mattered. And they did. Each voice counted. And each voice amplified by the next not only made this organization grow and thrive, but help protect a subspecies and act as a role model to the world, proving yet again the power of one. Over the last year, we've tried to reinforce this message to 100,000 students through our speaking tour and millions more through the newly launched Coalition Wild, a social movement of rising leaders creating a wilder world, founded in part by the Youth Coalition. As Coalition Wild officially launches at Wild 10 in Spain, and as the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition officially begins to write our final chapter, we want to spend the weeks and months ahead transitioning our network into this new movement for a wilder world. Truly, this is the end of one journey and the start of another. Never has there been a more urgent need to create a new vision for nature, one that is fueled by passion, built with integrity, and grounded in innovation. We need a 21st century environmental movement that is positive and forward-looking, but equally understanding of the human condition. Simply put, we need rising leaders to step forward with new ideas that can showcase through action that the environment is a family values, multi-partisan, geographically and ethnically diverse human right issue that must unite every single one of us. Each of you are rising leaders with a personal passion and a brilliant idea for creating a wilder world. Coalition Wild wants to give you the platform, the social network, and the mentorship to make your impossible dream a reality. And while the Spirit Bear Youth Coalition is far from perfect, we do hope that by weaving our network into that of Coalition Wild, we can create six million new ideas in business, in politics, in education, and yes, in advocacy, to help nature, giving each idea the tools and skills it needs to succeed. But succeed, you will. After all, we began with just one person, one young person, with no remarkable intellect, skills, or money, but armed simply with a passion. This crazy, long, exhausting, tumultuous, inspiring, and powerful journey began almost two decades ago. And today, in a movement that rarely gets to celebrate, we can say we did what we always wanted to do, 
put ourselves out of business because the spirit bear, it doesn't need us anymore. And while there are hills to climb for the bears and for the world, it won't be the Youth Coalition writing this next chapter. It'll be you. After all, each of you has written a bright future for this undeniably irreplaceable bear because of your passion, your donations, your letters, your time, your ideas, and your unwavering support. With each act you take on for the spirit bear, for any issue that you believe in, you will be continuing to write the history of our generation. And I, for one, am so proud of this generation for what we accomplished together and what we will continue to accomplish as we work to achieve a truly wilder world. As the kid who dreamed that impossible dream, thank you for sharing in my passion, for being a part of this adventure, and most importantly, for safeguarding the future of the spirit bear. Today is your celebration. You accomplished what we accomplished, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you so very much.